It begins before sunrise. Workstations are powered on, tools are ready, and Shapiro and Duncan workers anticipate the project ahead. Long before this day of the raw materials arrival, plans have been drawn, scrutinized, and optimized for maximum efficiency. Our designers have labored tirelessly to conceptualize and assemble digitally the entire industrial HVAC system, piece by piece, before the first length of raw pipe ever arrived at our fabrication shop in Landover, Maryland. Driven by a desire for the highest quality product at the best value for our customer, great care has been taken to ensure waste has been minimized and the entire system has been designed for a lifetime of maximum efficiency in this critical installation a hospital. This will be accomplished by Shapiro and Duncan's expertly trained team. This is the journey from the digital artboard of conceptualization to the finished product installed and in service. This is the life of Pipe. AutoCAD designers and coordinator specialists first develop the complete system based on project-specific needs. The system is carefully reviewed using digital simulations to ensure functionality. The designers and coordinators then detail the plans down to the smallest of parts through the creation of spool drawings. These are the drawings of each discrete pipe segment with their intended fittings, welds, lengths, bends, and end caps. Those drawings become the individual blueprints for the pipe segments, which Shapiro and Duncan workers will fabricate in-house to create a mammoth puzzle that will be erected at the job site. For the time being, the drawings also serve as the materials list for the order placed with the pipe vendor. We will be following Spool 53, the chiller return supply. At over 42 feet long and 20 inches in diameter, weighing in at over four tons, it is the largest pipe in the installation. The foundry receives the order and sets into motion the manufacturing process. The raw materials for Spool 53 arrive on a flatbed truck one morning in July. Here, a straight length of forged steel sits while workers ready its transport from the delivery vehicle to the shop's interior, where it will begin a dramatic series of events. Starting with a ride on the forklift, the forklift sets the pipe on a conveyor, which will carry it to the plasma torch. A computer-controlled cutting program has been loaded into the machine, per the requirements of the spool. The pipe travels down this 60-foot automated conveyor, and the cutting begins. The machine rotates the pipe as the torch precisely cuts it into the required length, including cutting round holes where connections will later be welded. After just a few minutes on the plasma torch, the pipe has been cut to length with the required holes cut and beveled. It is now ready to move on to the next station. A building structure mounted gantry crane assists workers in moving the pipe around the shop. Here, it's used to lift the pipe from the plasma torch to the turner. The turning station is intended to help technicians weld the joints to the cut lengths of pipe. In this device, the pipe slowly rotates at the operator's command, so the fittings can be tack welded into place. A quality control specialist then measures the pipe from multiple angles to ensure that it conforms to the dimensions and lengths called for by the original plans. With the inspection complete, the welder is given the green light to weld the fittings into place. The worker welds the pieces together while the turner aids in the pipe's handling. After the joints are welded, the edges are rough and in need of additional attention. The pipe is measured again to check for any shifting that may have occurred during the welding process. The welder then grinds the seams of the joints with a grinding tool so that they are smooth. When he's satisfied with the work, the pipe moves to another station where the welds are painted to help protect against corrosion. It is then marked with a number which will identify it for future shipping, transport and installation. The inside of the pipe is then blown clean and the openings are covered with plastic wrap to prevent dirt, debris or moisture from entering during its time in the stockyard. After the pipe has been painted and sealed, it is forklifted to the stockyard where it will await transport to the job site. The day has arrived for the pipe to be delivered to the job site. The timing has been carefully coordinated with Shapiro and Duncan's foreman on the site as well as the crane operator who will be picking the pipe from the delivery truck. The pipe is again forklifted onto a flatbed truck and the
strapped into place for its journey. The truck leaves the yard with the cargo in tow and travels to the job site. When the pipe arrives on site, workers coordinate over two-way radios and ready operations to receive the massive spool. This is not the only pipe to be delivered today, and time with a crane is limited. Every movement must be perfectly executed in order to most efficiently manage the cargo. Finally, it's Spool 53's turn to be lifted from the truck. It soars overhead, lifted by a tower crane, and is lowered to a team of Shapiro and Duncan workers who swiftly load the pipe onto temporary rolling carts. It takes six men to push the pipe to the place where it will be installed in the system. Workers ready the site by drilling into solid concrete and then install temporary anchors, which will be used to connect chain falls to hoist the pipe to the required height. The system of chain falls are installed and workers fit straps to the pipe. The straps are then connected to the chains. Four men simultaneously work the pulleys to lift the pipe into place inside the hangers. These hangers will not only hold the pipe in place while it's bolted and welded to the other spools in the system, but also serve as a means for the pipe to expand and contract when the temperature changes in the system. This flexibility causes much less stress on the system and increases its life and functionality. When the pipe reaches the proper height, workers bolt the hangers into place. This will hold the pipe while the system is assembled and workers can move on to other facets of the installation until the pipe is ready for the next phase of construction. Once the physical installation of Spool 53 has been completed, there is still much work to be done. Workers have insulated and labeled all of the pipes to help ensure temperature consistency throughout various parts of the system. Now that the pipes have been protected and labeled, it is time to test for any faults that may be hiding in the system. This is a tremendous undertaking as there are thousands of fittings connecting the system to motors, condensers, filters, fluid reservoirs, exhaust vents, intake vents, and fans in this installation. This is not to mention the miles of ductwork woven throughout the structure to distribute the temperature-regulated air. Shapiro and Duncan workers now test the pressure in various parts of the system. Adjusting parameters of individual elements as they work they calibrate the system to maximum performance and protect against any initial defect that could develop into a larger problem in future years. There are sensors throughout the system that help to maximize performance and efficiency. These sensors also report their status to the main control panel. This is a crucial function of a large HVAC system. In the central plant annex, located across the parking lot from the hospital, there are more critical pieces of equipment to tend to. First, the fans atop the cooling tower are spun up and are tested for proper speed and functionality. The fans that exhaust the heat from the system are over 10 feet across and are each driven by a 75 horsepower motor. Fan speed is a variable function which is controlled by variable frequency drives which are calibrated and the data they report is interpreted by Shapiro and Duncan technicians and the manufacturer. Once they are properly programmed, they are ready to be integrated into the system. Beneath the cooling tower is the sump basin, which is the cooling tower's water reservoir. Here is where water is collected after the heat is removed from evaporation as the water flows down the fill and the fans force air through the intake louvers across the fill collecting in the basin below. In the basin, the water is filtered through screens to remove debris captured in the section of open loop and flows back into the system to a heat exchanger where it will remove heat from the closed chilled water loop. Back in the hospital, there is more to inspect on the rooftop. Workers enter all of the chiller rooms to visually inspect the condition of the filters and machinery. The filter racks here are over 12 feet tall and 20 feet long. These filters are similar to what would be included in a residential HVAC installation, but are substantially larger since they handle a much greater volume of air. There are two stages of filtration, beginning with a MERV-8 and progressing through a MERV-11 rack. It is critical that no airborne dirt or particulate matter pass into the air supply to the hospital. 
There are dozens of motors here powering fans to force air around the system and are contained in isolated compartments in the rooms for the safety of personnel performing maintenance on the equipment while the system is running. The ductwork has been insulated and run side by side with the pipes carrying water to air handlers in the building from the chillers in the basement. These pipes and ducts run vertically floor to floor from the roof to the basement to facilitate the distribution of water and air between components. When the technicians are satisfied that all of the individual components of the system are functioning properly, it is time to test the system as a whole and turn on the AC. Without our spool 53, there would be no water returning to the chiller, which would give the system no way to have the constant influx of fluid that is required to later cool the air, and the system would cease to function. Although the impressive size of spool 53 seems to signify a great importance, the same crippling effects of a missing component would be true of any piece of this well-designed system. The goal of 100% uptime is far from impossible when such great care has been taken to ensure that every part of the HVAC system from beginning to end has been carefully designed, installed, tested, and commissioned to complete a system that is sure to run trouble-free for years to come. At Shapiro & Duncan, we take care to design, fabricate, and install HVAC systems with quality ever in mind. When the work is completed by our team of technicians, operators, and designers, we produce less waste, offer higher quality installation, and better value to our clients. Our commitment to the highest standard of care is evident throughout the system. From the first line drawn in the digital world to the end user enjoying the comfort level provided, Spool 53 played a major role in this specific installation, but so do all of our pipes and people. They are all crafted with the same level of care and attention to detail, whether they are 42 feet long or small enough to be lifted with one hand. It is this level of dedication to our craft that promises you, the customer, the best possible product.